Hi, I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm here again to help you to become a better investor. And I want to talk to you about today is Apple's entry into the EV business. Tim Cook announced it, that he would be uh, entering the EV business. And you got to uh, understand, Apple is a brand. It is a technological design company. It designs a quality product. And that's where I think Tim wants to go. Now, he's put some parameters down around it. One is the car will be built in the United States and we will not make it. That's his words. So who's going to make the car for them? Well, the most important element in that car is the battery. So who's the largest battery maker in the world that he could go to? It's a company called Cattle, C-A-T-L. It's a Chinese company. It is rumored to be very well controlled by China, the, 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 the government. It is also the supplier of Tesla's battery. So then there is another company called by the name of BYD. It's not traded in the United States except on the uh, over-the-counter market, and I own it. I've owned it since last November, and it trades under the ticker on the over-the-counter market of BYDDF. BYD stands for Build Your Dream. Been around since 1925. It is actually uh, the second largest manufacturer in the world of electric vehicles, second behind Tesla. Uh, but it does a lot in trucks, in buses, in forklifts, and it is now developing its line of automobiles. So there is a general consensus that one of these two are going to end up being the battery provider. Now, who's going to build it and where are they going to build it? Well, I want to put someone else into the mix, and that is Foxconn. Foxconn is the t Taiwanese company that makes uh, all of Apple's iPhones. If you'll remember back in uh, July 28th of 2018, you saw this. This is Donald Trump and uh, several American politicians and Taiwanese um, Foxconn owners breaking ground south of Racine, Wisconsin for the $10 billion factory that they were going to build there. Hasn't panned out the way that it, it was it's supposed to, but those are the four players. The four players that I think are going to give you the answer, me the answer, uh, of how Apple is going to enter the, uh, the, the, the EV business. And thus then, I want to say, how am I going to make money off of it? How am I going to profit? That's what this video is all about. We're going to connect the dots and then lay down our bet as to who we think is going to end up being Apple's partner or partner's in producing an electric vehicle. That's what we're going to talk about. Again, I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm a retired financial advisor. I'm the host of Best of Us Investors. I run a Discord um, uh, through Patreon that where we share ideas like this. In fact, I'm starting, uh, and every Monday morning, let's look at the market um, video that I'm going to do on the Patreon, and then a Friday afternoon video for the for our members of how how are we going to deal with next week's market. So stick with me on here. I'm not your financial advisor. I'm here purely for entertainment and education purposes, and I'll be right with you. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Okay, how does this play out? And is it in fact going to happen? Well, let me share with you, and what I'm going to do within this video is accumulate and share with you the knowledge that I've acquired uh, on this subject so that you, you know as much as I do. Watch this video. Chinese firms could be set for a key role in Apple's planned electric car. 
The tech giant is reportedly talking to BYD and CATL over supplies of batteries. That is according to Reuters sources. CATL already supplies Tesla and is the world's biggest maker of EV batteries. BYD is the number four and also makes its own vehicles. Now the discussions are said to be subject to change and it's not clear if any agreement will be reached. The iPhone maker has set one tough condition. Sources say Apple is insisting on manufacturing in the US. That reportedly doesn't appeal to CATL, which is worried about the political tensions between Washington and Beijing. Reuters reported in December that Apple was working on self-driving technology and aiming to launch a vehicle in 2024. It, as I said, Foxconn is Apple's maker of, uh, of their iPhone. And we've all seen Trump, um, President Trump, breaking ground on in July of 2018. That factory hasn't worked out. It was originally supposed to be a factory where they were going to make the big screen TVs and, and larger uh, computer monitors and things of that nature. And it was going to employ, I believe, 13,000 people. And that was in 18, and we're now in 21, three years later. It hasn't turned out to be what it is. They even displaced a lot of people uh, from a neighborhood and um, it, it's, it's not setting well. So there, there's a rub there, and this is a partner, if you will, with Apple. So I think they play into that picture. As I said, the other, the other players are cattle. Cattle is the largest battery manufacturer, uh, very China-controlled, and, and cattle has basically said, we're not comfortable uh, coming to the United States and, and, and making batter or, 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 or building cars or, or building a factory in the United States. Apple is not going to build this car. So I'm leaning towards uh, BYD. As I said, I've owned BYD since November of last year. It doesn't move much. You never see it on CNBC. Um, and part of the reason is being a Chinese company, when they do issue quarterly reports, uh, they're in Mandarin Chinese. So there aren't many analysts here in the United States who are going to be uh, qualified to interpret their reports. So we don't hear anything about them. But I would be safe to say, I feel safe to say, that by 2035, uh, BYD could possibly be challenging as the largest company in the world. Because think of this, they're, they're, a elect, they're the second largest electric vehicle uh, maker in the, United, in, in the world. Um, if you go to New York City and you find or, or a, a electric taxi cab or an electric um, bus, it's a, it's a BYD. Uh, we, we aren't going to see many of their, their cars in, in our country because that is not what they're making here. They have a plant in um, Lancaster, I believe it is, California. So they already have a presence. Uh, I've seen interviews with their CEO uh, in, in California, and her, her take is our reason for being here is to destroy the image that anything that you buy from China is cheap and not well made and not of quality of the United States. And we, my role, as she says, is to spell, is to dispel that brand. Now, they're, as I said, they're the fourth largest battery company in the world. In, and they're, they make a different kind of battery. It, it's, it's a shelf-looking battery, and it is, it is much safer than the uh, batteries that, um, uh, like cattle make, that Tesla uses. It passes the nail penetration, and what this is, is one of the ways they test batteries is they take a nail and drive it through it. If you use the conventional battery system, that will explode it, turn it, catch it on fire. You can't do that with the BYD battery. In fact, I'm going to ask you to do something that is kind of unusual. I want you to find this, um, this uh, uh, 
video. It's called BYD Factory Tour and Full Full Range of EV. And it's put out by um, Full Charged Show. Uh, fully charged show. This this guy does a lot of work on electric vehicles. An excellent introduction for you uh, to to BYD. And I think it's in your best interest that you understand BYD. Okay. Then I I, I went further and said, okay, who 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 has gotten past this burden? that um, BYD puts out all its reports in Mandarin and, in fact, can help us better understand. And I came across a young man who runs a company called Snowball Capital uh, out of Boston, and his name is Taylor Ogden, O-G-A-N. O-G-A-N. And he has appeared on a video by uh, Paul Burden, Barden Network, P P A U L B A R R O N Network. In a particular video they did, Apple wants BYD batteries for electric Apple cars. You need to find that video and watch it and learn from Taylor. Taylor is going to give you more information about this relationship, and I think Taylor and I will convince you that, first of all, Apple is going to build an electric vehicle, that more than likely that electric vehicle will be manufactured by BYD, and that there's a strong possibility it's going to be built uh, in Wisconsin on Foxconn's land. Those are the dots that I want to connect for you. And this is how I think. I I look into the future, I gather information, and then I connect dots and say, okay, if in fact Apple is going to build an electric car and they're not going to do it themselves and they're going to build it in the, it has to be built in the United States, then who's going to build it for them? BYD. And where is it going to be built? Racine, Wisconsin, what do, how do I profit? I profit by owning BYD. And if you'll listen to Taylor, Taylor goes out on the limb and basically says, BYD will be the largest company in the world. I think he says something like 2050. Now, why do I think, why do I kind of agree with Taylor? To be the largest company in the world in 2050, is going to require that you're an international company. And that is that you are you are an active player in the United States, in China, and in India. That that's that's a major part of the first world commerce in the world. We have seen that that we can't, Apple and Amazon and Google can't get into China, and they've all three made inroads into India. This is the trump card that BYD holds. They're already in the U.S., and they're already in China, and they're in a exploding industry, electric vehicles, batteries, safe industry. And when you watch this tour of electric vehicles, pay particular t- attention to their, I think it's called a D1. DD is China's uh, cab company, okay? Pay attention to that and, and pay attention to the buses that DY, BYD is making. These are people who are looking at what does the consumer want and how can we fit it. So, okay, if we've connected those dots and we believe we're right, then the only question is, is Apple really going to do this? Are they really? Well, what would they have to do in order to do this other than build a factory, make an alliance with a company? They got to have the personnel. They got to ha- they got to be building a team that is that can design the automobiles that can that can create the the electronics in them 
to feed what BYD might need to make an Apple vehicle. So they need to be hiring people. Watch this. So who is this person and what will they be doing, Mark? Yeah, Emily, thank you for having me. Apple hired Ulrich Kranz, and this is actually a big name in the automotive industry. He worked at BMW for about 30 years, ultimately becoming in charge of their electric car division, which produced the, the i3, that boxy looking uh, four door uh, BMW that's uh, a hybrid, as well as the i8, the uh, over $100,000 uh, electric car slash hybrid uh, from BMW. Neither of those uh, BMW models have become smash hits. The, the design of the i3 was criticized. The i8, for all intents and purposes, is not a very good car, uh, but they are well designed. And those are cars that probably uh, have inspired Apple to go into the field. And more recently, he was the co-founder and CEO of a self-driving electric car a company called Canoe. And he also spent a few months as the CTO of Faraday Future. What is Apple's relationship with BMW? I wonder uh, if there's a backstory here. Yeah, Apple has a good relationship with uh, BMW. BMW was actually Apple's first partner uh, 17 years ago on iPod, if you remember those, integration in cars. They were also Apple's first partner on Car Key. It's the feature they launched last year that allows your iPhone through the wallet app to double as a, as a digital car key for some newer BMW models. Uh, there's also a picture that floated around Twitter back in 2014 of Tim Cook actually testing out the BMW i8 in front of Apple's Cupertino headquarters. And there's also been meetings here and there between uh, Apple executives and BMW executives over in, in Europe. Now, you last reported that Apple had lost some significant folks in the car department. You know, where does that leave the, that department now, how far along is Apple really in developing a car? Yeah, I don't think anything has changed. Apple's still in the very early exploratory stages. Uh, this car is probably five years away at the very minimum, and that might be a low ball estimate, uh, to be honest with you. So I would say five to seven or eight years is what we had reported back in January. Uh, the car team has many former Tesla executives, including uh, former Tesla vice presidents in charge of key car components like Tesla's autopilot self-driving software. They hired Steve McManus two years ago, who was in charge of car interiors and exterior design at Tesla. And he has a massive team of people working on car hardware. Uh, they also hired the former head of manufacturing engineering and drivetrain systems from Tesla as well. And Doug Field, the person who runs the project, was the chief engineer uh, at Tesla and oversaw the development of the Model 3. So you can't really get much more evidence than that, that uh, Apple is looking to build a, a Tesla rival down the road. Okay, we've just added a fourth dot. They're gonna build cars, Apple. They're, they need a company to do it for them in the United States, BYD. They need a place to build that plant Foxconn, Racine, Wisconsin's got the land, got a relationship, and they need the people. Okay, you draw the circle. I think we've figured it out. All right, again, how do you profit on it? BYD, it sells under BYDDF. It's still about a $20 stock. Now, the, it, it trades for more in China, but this is your entry. This is your entry. I would say don't put 50% of your portfolio in it, but put enough in it that if in five years it quadrupled, you'd feel good about it. You'd say, hey, thank you, Carrie, for putting me onto this. This is something I think you need to do. This is what my channel is going to be all about. I have reached out to Taylor Augen uh, of Snowball Capital, and I've asked him to come on to our channel and help us become more knowledgeable about this whole realm. He's also extremely knowledgeable about Tesla. That's what this channel is going to evolve into. And that is that it's not all about me. It's not all about Kerry Grinkmeyer, a retired financial advisor, who is telling you what he thinks um, NEO is going to be worth next week. No, I, I don't care. And I don't know what BYD is going to be worth next week, but I know 
five years from now, it's going to be worth a lot more than it is now. Because I, I kind of go along with Taylor. If they aren't, if they aren't the largest company in the world by 2050, they're going to be fighting for it. Because again, in order to claim that title, you're going to have to do business in three countries, the United States, China, and India. And I don't know anybody else who might be able to get that done. Okay, that's my take for Sunday. Um, again, if you want to be a part of our Monday morning and Friday afternoon uh, conference call to discuss the markets and um, insights and where you can participate, uh, come to Best of Us Investors, sign up, and you'll find it on the Discord. All right, have a good day. 